It's time for munching. And mating. In the Macrocystis, or Giant Kelp, with your host, Dr. Bill Bushing. One of the best things about my job is that when I go to the office, I don't have to wear a tie with my suit. Wetsuit, that is. The northern elephant seal, also called the sea elephant, is known scientifically as Marunja angustirostris. It is the largest phocid, or true seal, in the northern hemisphere, and one of only two species of elephant seals in the world, the other being the southern elephant seal, Marunja leonina. The name elephant seal comes from their large size as well as the trunk-like proboscis of the mature males. The genus name Marunja comes from an Australian Aboriginal word for these seals, and the species name Angustirostris means narrow nose. Although I've had occasional encounters with these pinnipeds in the waters off Catalina, they are not frequently seen here. Most of the footage in these episodes comes from a breeding colony that established near the Piedras Blancas Lighthouse near San Simeon, just below the Hearst Castle. I first encountered this population back around 1991 when leading a UCSB marine botany field trip. While the undergraduates studied the intertidal algae on the north side of the lighthouse, I took a walk around to the other side. I was startled to encounter more than a dozen mature males staring at me and hightailed it back to the other side and safety. I was in such a hurry that I forgot to even take a single picture. Today there are some 17,000 elephant seals along six miles of shoreline at Piedras Blancas. Most of this footage was taken during the breeding season of 2013 to 14. The first thing that strikes one about them is usually their huge size, especially that of the males. Historically, there were reports of bull elephant seals as large as 18 feet and more than 8,000 pounds. Today, most observers place large bulls at between 14 and 16 feet or four to five meters, and up to 5,000 pounds, or 2,300 kilograms. Of course, I wouldn't want to be the person trying to get them up on a scale. The species is sexually dimorphic, with females significantly smaller than the males. Females may be eight to as much as 12 feet, 2.5 to 3.6 meters, and weigh nearly 1,000 up to 2,000 pounds, or 400 to 900 kilograms, although most are near the lower end of these ranges. The sexual dimorphism is also obvious in other characteristics, such as the male's extended nose, or proboscis, and the enlarged canine teeth of the males, which are used in fighting. The proboscis starts developing as early as age two, but is not fully developed until age seven to eight. The true seals lack pinnae, or ear flaps, like those seen in the eared seals, including our local California sea lion, Xolophus californianus. Unlike the sea lion, which can rotate its hind flippers underneath the body and walk on land, the elephant seal must crawl, and has been referred to as a lumbering mass of blubber on land. Their bodies may be composed of as much as 50% fat at certain times of the year. Elephant seals have broad, round faces with large black eyes, 
which aid in finding prey when hunting deep underwater. Unlike their movement on land, they are good swimmers, and the body is streamlined. The mammary glands and penis are internalized to assist in this. Swimming is accomplished using their rear flippers. The front flippers are used very little underwater, but function on land to scratch their bodies and flip sand over them to cool off. The fur is usually brown in color, with the males often a darker brown and the females a light tan. They may also appear gray and have no spots such as seen in the harbor seals. Adults are often countershaded with a darker upper surface and a lighter colored belly. This makes it more difficult for predators to see them from below against the lighter sky or from above against the darker ocean. Newborn pups are dark black in color, which may help absorb warmth from the sun during the winter when they are born. They mold after they are weaned and develop a new coat of silver gray. Northern elephant seals are not particularly long-lived. However, because they spend so much of their lives out at sea, it is somewhat difficult to accurately determine their lifespan. Estimates range from 14 to 17 years for males with the girls living longer, perhaps 19 to 22 years. As its name suggests, the northern elephant seal lives exclusively in the northern hemisphere, almost entirely in the eastern Pacific. They are found from the Gulf of California, or Sea of Cortez, as far north as the Gulf of Alaska and western Aleutian Islands. During their feeding migrations, the females may extend as far west as the Hawaiian Islands, and elephant seals have been reported off Japan as well. Most of their lives are spent at sea rather than on land. They do come ashore to pup, mate, and molt. At this time they seek out sandy beaches. In the past these locations have largely been on islands where they are protected from terrestrial predators. As grizzly bears and other large carnivores were driven from the coastal mainland by human settlement, these areas began to be utilized as well. These land-based areas are far more restricted in geographic distribution, but they are expanding as the seal population increases. Mainland sites such as near Piedras Blancas, Morro Bay, and Año Nuevo are being utilized as well as new locations in Oregon and British Columbia. In terms of geologic time, Elephant seals have been in California for about 100 to 130,000 years, since the beginning of the last major ice age. During the peak extent of the glaciers, ocean waters in the northern and southern hemispheres became much colder. Winter sea ice extended as far south as northern Baja in North America. The warm tropical and subtropical regions became constricted and elephant seals could travel between the northern and southern hemispheres while at sea. Then, when the ice age ended and the seas warmed up, a barrier between the two hemispheres was established when the subtropics and tropics expanded again, and the two populations diverged enough over time to be considered distinct species. Currently, there are between 664 and 740,000 individuals of this species in three subpopulations. The largest is in the South Atlantic, the second subpopulation is in the Southern Indian Ocean, the third and smallest subpopulation is south of Tasmania and New Zealand. Humans had a devastating effect on these species in historic time. Well before we discovered how to pump petroleum out of the ground, marine mammals, including whales and seals, were the primary source of oil for lamps and other uses. Thank goodness man hadn't invented the automobile yet. Due to their large size and high fat content, elephant seals were prized for their blubber. Whale and seal hunter Charles Scammon reported that an 18-foot bull elephant on Santa Barbara Island yielded 210 gallons of oil, or five 42-gallon barrels. 
These pinnipeds were hunted beginning as early as the late 18th century. By the 1860s, some 250,000 seals had been killed. By 1883, it was thought that the entire population might have been driven to extinction, but 80 seals were found on remote Guadalupe Island off Baja. All of them were killed. In 1892, an expedition from the Smithsonian, led by Townsend and Anthony, discovered eight or nine individuals on Guadalupe and promptly killed seven of them for the museum. I guess biologists in that era didn't understand the need for two of every species as Noah had much earlier. By 1910 it was believed that as few as 20 or as many as a hundred individuals had survived commercial hunting. Sadly, although it was no longer commercially viable to hunt them, museum collectors continued to kill them until the Mexican government declared Guadalupe Island a biological reserve in 1922. As the recovering population expanded into Southern California, the U.S. government added protections here, which were strengthened further with the passage of the Marine Mammal Protection Act in 1972. Based on this, it is possible that the estimated 170,000 members of this species originated from as few as 20 individuals. Thus, the species' genetic diversity is most likely quite limited. When a species is devastated by natural disaster, disease, or hunting, but recovers from a small remnant population, we say they have gone through a genetic bottleneck. The former genetic diversity of the population has been largely lost. This can affect the species' long-term viability. Elephant seals are pelagic and live most of their life in the open ocean. Not all of them return to land at the same time. This may mean others survived and undoubtedly contributed to their recovery from devastation. As the remnant population increased, breeding populations extended into the Channel Islands by the 1930s. San Miguel and San Nicolas Islands became the main source for seals which migrated to the central California rookeries. The first were seen off Año Nuevo in 1955, with the first pups born there in 1961. The first seals appeared at Piedras Blancas in 1990, a year before I first saw them. Current day estimates of the population size are difficult to make, since not all age classes or sexes are on shore at the same time. Back in 1960, the total number was approximately 15,000 with 99% of them on Guadalupe and the other offshore Mexican islands and only 1% in the Channel Islands. By 1991, there were approximately 84,000 elephant seals in the Channel Islands and 32,000 in Mexico. The San Miguel Island rookery alone may have produced 49% of that year's pups. In 2005, the total population was estimated at 172,000. The northern elephant seal is said to be the only mammal known to undertake two migrations each year. Their route may encompass 13,000 miles or 21,000 kilometers. Of course, this is all in the water, with the males spending about 250 days and the females 300 days at sea each year. It is also quite a contrast to their time on land during pupping and breeding season when they are fasting and move as little as possible to conserve energy. After they leave the rookery in February and March, males and females follow separate migration paths because they feed on different prey. The bulls tuck in close to the continental margin and feed on bottom fish, small sharks, and rays at depth. The cows go out into the open ocean where they are safer from sharks and feed midwater, primarily on squid. The male's route ends up in the Gulf of Alaska and out to the western Aleutian Islands, while the females feed south of the Gulf and out as far as Hawaii. The male's migration route is longer than that of the females by one to two thousand miles, 
and the largest bulls tend to swim the greatest distance. Cows return to the rookeries, usually in late April or early May, to molt. They are followed by the young males in early summer and by the mature bulls in late summer. Rather than shed hair throughout the year like cats and dogs, elephant seals do it all at once. The mold involves shedding all their fur and the upper layer of skin. I guess that wouldn't make them very good house pets. The process is referred to as a catastrophic or radical mold. It's a good thing it happens during the warmer months of spring and summer. The molt and regrowth of skin and fur takes three to five weeks. After they molt, they begin their second migration, returning to their northern feeding areas. You now understand that the elephant seal undergoes periods of feast and famine, eating while at sea and fasting while on the rookeries during breeding and molting season. Males may not even feed at sea until they reach their feeding grounds. Elephant seals are probably solitary while at sea. Bulls undertake feeding dives that may be the deepest of any pinniped and last for extremely long periods. Dives to 1,000 to 2,500 feet or 300 to 800 meters are considered routine for the males. It is reported that the maximum depth recorded was over 5,000 feet or 1,500 meters. They may remain submerged for 20 minutes to over an hour, with the maximum time reported as about two hours. These seals generally do not feed above 700 feet or 200 meters. Females feed at shallower depths where their prey is located. While average dives for the bulls may be 1,150 to 2,600 feet, or 350 to 800 meters, cows average 1,000 to 2,000 feet, or 300 to 600 meters. The average dive may be 13 to 17 minutes for a female, versus 17 to 25 for males. Some sources stated that elephant seals dive and feed only at night, but these appear to be an error. Most sources indicated they are submerged between 80 and 95 percent of the time they are at sea. One researcher tracked a female for a period of 34 days. During that time, she dove almost continuously with stops at the surface averaging about three minutes between dives. Such intense diving activity suggests elephant seals rarely sleep. Although some researchers identified five different dive patterns, some associated with rest. We divers are probably curious as to how they accomplish this. First, although some sources reported they hold their breath, elephant seals are known to expel the air in their lungs before submerging. Their systems are adapted to store oxygen in the muscle tissue and fat. They also slow their heartbeat from 110 down to 20 to 40 per minute. Their circulatory systems are adapted to the cold waters of the deep ocean by having a network of small veins surrounding the arteries in the extremities to recapture heat. The large eyes may be useful in hunting bioluminescent squid, and the whiskers or vibrissae may help detect bottom dwellers in the dark depths. Differences in diving behavior between males and females is linked to their food preferences, which is also related to the difference in their body size. The large size of mature bulls makes them less vulnerable to predation by sharks in nearshore waters. Deep diving also makes them less susceptible to predation. Females, which are more prone to attacks due to their smaller body size, reduce the probability by heading out to the open ocean. Fifty-five species have been identified in the diet of elephant seals. These include swell sharks, spiny dogfish, rays, skates, ratfish, rockfish, pacific hake, eels, squid, crustaceans, tunicates, and bioluminescent cephalopods like squid and octopus. The bulls prefer bottom-dwelling fish, small sharks, and rays, while the ladies focus primarily on pelagic or open-water squid. Most of these prey species are of low commercial value 
or are not harvested in quantity by any fishery. In turn, sharks get their revenge by preying primarily on the pups and juveniles. Occasional predation by orcas has also been observed. Elephant seals do not drink. No, they aren't members of AA. I'm referring to water. It is believed their entire source of this vital fluid comes from their food and the metabolism of their fat. By concentrating their urine to reduce water loss and breathing in frequently on land to reduce evaporative water loss during respiration, they are able to obtain a net production of water through their metabolism. While on land, they may hold their breath as long as 25 minutes to help accomplish this. In a later episode, we will discuss the mating and pupping of this species. Stay tuned for this episode of Dr. Bill's Munching and Mating in the Macrocystis.